good morning everyone uh, good morning and good evening and good afternoon and good evening to people uh, who uh, watch these webinars from different parts of the world uh, my name is dish vishwanand i am a professor here at harvard th chan uh, school of public health uh, as well as uh, a, the director of the harvard chan school of public health india research center which is located in mumbai um, we have a real treat for you today um i'm joining and i'm joined by friends and colleagues from india uh, the united states and around the globe uh, for a webinar uh, which showcases what harvard chan school of public health has done and does does so well uh, we not only uh, produce knowledge uh, doing our research uh, uh, with the real world implications uh, to improve population health uh, but we take our mission of Uh, capacity building and training uh, very seriously uh, as well as uh, uh, and translation and communications um, and uh, our goal is not just doing this in the united states but all over the world so today you will see one such example uh, where we have partnered with apollo hospitals in looking at the wonderful work they have been doing in india uh, on healthcare Uh, particularly uh, uh, as a part of their corporate uh, social responsibility uh, mission uh, i before i do this uh, i should uh, say that uh, I, i do want to thank uh, mr reddy pratap reddy dr pratap reddy uh, ms sunita reddy uh, ms sangeeta reddy uh, uh, and uh, for working with us uh, and uh, sunita particularly value your collaboration over the last few years uh and and of course uh, my team at the harvard india chan uh, center uh, who have been working diligently behind the scenes uh, on a variety of projects including this project and of course our team at oer who have worked so hard uh, to pull this off uh, i should uh, next introduce uh, dean michelle williams uh, so uh, it is uh, in addition to her uh, global reputation as an epidemiologist uh, dean williams uh, as also a well known global public health leader uh, who has been forging uh, interesting pathways and trails on what public health leadership means particularly in in these difficult times today uh, so her reputation as a public health leader and an epidemiologist are very well known what is that not well known is her affinity to india Uh, in her very short tenure she has already visited india two times uh, she has been tremendous advocate uh, expanding the breadth and depth of schools engagement in india and the india research center uh, since her visits she is a strong believer of the vast potential uh, for improving lives through public health in the indian context as well as a two way exchange of knowledge uh, that is being generated with that so i want to i am also i should note uh, for people uh, that dean williams was already booked with a different meeting uh, but she ch changed her schedule uh, to be with us at least for the first 30 minutes of the program so i'm very grateful to you dean williams for doing that please go ahead thank you good morning good afternoon good evening everyone and let me just say um thank you to vish uh, for that very generous introduction and i also want to say thank you to sangeeta and to sanita and dr reddy um you are a source of inspiration and in my visits um to india i was deeply inspired by the stories i heard about the main topic that we're going to be talking about in this hour and 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 i i'm so delighted that over the arc of 2 years we've been able to create this case to bring our organizations together on behalf of public health public health in india but also global health because the successes of this total health experiment is a textbook a road map a blueprint for what can be accomplished at the population level globally if we put our hearts and mind and talents to it so a personal thank you uh to vish 
to the Reddy family and to the two teams from the Harvard Chan School of Public Health, as well as the team at the India Research Center in Mumbai for making this event possible and allowing um, many, many more people to see what can happen when we put our hearts, minds, and gifts um, to work on behalf of population health for the most vulnerable. So um, let me um, just segue into uh, my, my formal um, welcome to everyone. This is really, truly an honor um, for us to be launching our case study on the Total Health Program which is led by the Apollo Hospitals Group. As I mentioned just briefly, two years ago, um, the Harvard Chan School of Public Health was a knowledge partner for the 15th annual India Health Summit. This was a summit sponsored by the Confederation of India, Indian Industries. And as Dean of the school, I had the honor uh, to travel and participate in this summit with, I believe it was seven other Harvard Chan faculty members. And in the process of engaging in this summit, we celebrated our ties as partners in India, and we also met with a number of new collaborators. Additionally, the exchange of ideas and hopes and aspirations led to a variety, a long list of things that we identified that we could do together. And again, today's presentation is just one of those many things we identified that we could do together. It was at that summit, essentially, that I was able to meet and learn and enjoy my connection with the Reddy family and to begin to appreciate the commitment of our Chan School of Public Health and Apollo Hospital Group were shared and that we had a shared aspiration of improving population health in India and sharing that knowledge of how improvement could be done in a sustainable way and a scalable way. And that's where the sharing comes in. It was here that I first started to hear about Apollo's total health program. And the seed was then planted for us to do an in-depth study of the program so we could bring the lessons learned forward to others. Making this in-depth study possible included a lot of work and of a lot of dedicated individuals. Work at the Harvard Chan India Research Center in Mumbai, and also the five years that this center has worked, the accumulation of expertise, talent, this India Center became a hub for our activities across India. The center embodies our commitment to public health, our commitment to service, our commitment to education, and our commitment to innovation across the Indian subcontinent and beyond. It was and it continues to be an extension of the school's work in the region, both in coordinating our many educational activities as well as encouraging new ventures that promote public, private, academic, philanthropic um, partnerships. And so it really was a tremendous opportunity for us to engage with our partners at Apollo Health to launch uh, this activities. Let me say something about the school's five frontier areas and how they resonate so deeply with India and India's public health ambitions. The goals of the Harvard Chan School of Public Health and our aspirations are for better health in India and better health for all across the globe. At our school, we've articulated five frontier areas. These are critical research areas that enable us to make tangible differences in the lives of millions around the world in real time to basically translate knowledge as it is acquired immediately into the field to address some of the world's most pressing immediate problems. And so as we join together to tackle these problems, it's clear that we need to engage all sectors in addressing public health, global health challenges. And these challenges in the five areas are 
reimagining and countering the ill effects of aging, overcoming violence and trauma, confronting the impacts of climate change. And we heard Dr. Reddy so beautifully talk about the impact that drought conditions were having on the health and economic wellness and security of populations that you're going to hear about today. And other frontier areas include cultivating well-being and nutrition, beginning with self-care, family care, and community health around well-being and nutrition. And finally, and this is a topic of emergent, urgent need, is confronting and conquering epidemics, those that we confront today, but also investing in preventing and being prepared for the inevitable next epidemic and pandemic. So in these five frontier areas have relevancy across India and across the globe. And I'm so proud to be the head of a school that aspires to work with partners from all across the world, including our wonderful partnership with Apollo Hospital Group in tackling these major uh, 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 threats. In closing, I'd like to specifically call out and express my gratitude to Professor Rick Seacrest. He is ideally suited uh, to this case as we brainstormed about how we were going to bring this forward. Vish and I did not have to look far, um, but to go to Rick Seacrest, a senior lecture, lecturer in healthcare and management popular in healthcare and management department, uh, to join us in this effort. And it didn't take much to get Rick to sign on and become a partner in this effort. Rick teaches um, a very popular course on innovation, entrepreneurship, and public health. And you will see the benefits of his talents brought forward in this case through his direct work and his indirect work in mentoring and supporting our students who were involved. Finally, I'd like to say corporations like Apollo Hospital will play and will continue to play a very critical role in shaping and improving healthcare delivery and promoting population health and wellness outside of the healthcare delivery space in communities where people live, work, learn, play. And this is important for us because I hope that this case will encourage others in the private sector to realize how they can play a role in bringing about positive change that builds, supports, and enables populations to thrive. I think this case will be an example of the efficacy and the scalability of innovative initiatives that like Total Health can bring about health promoting, health preservation, health protecting activities for populations. And lastly, I wanna acknowledge the generosity of another family. The Rose Traveling Fellowship Program, which was established by Deborah Rose, made it possible made it possible and enabled our student, Monica Nirmala, to travel to India, to be embedded in this natural experiment of real innovation at the population health level, and to gain the va valuable immersive experience while bringing forward this case. So a heartfelt thanks to all involved from the conceptualization to the design to the execution of this case and a thank you to all out there who are watching this, who can join in the activity by replicating and bringing to scale what you're going to learn from this case in other places across India and across the globe. Harvard Chan wants to and will continue to have impact in global health. And we can't really say that we have this impact if we don't begin to immediately work on solving the problems that confront populations in India and other parts of the world. With this, I want to thank you for your attention and I look forward to participating in as much of this um, case study presentation as I can. With gratitude, thank you. 
Thank you, Dean Williams. That was wonderful. Um, uh, I know that you have to go. And uh, as I said, it's very kind of you to change your schedule and attend this to the extent possible. Uh, I should note a couple of things which I did not. Uh, I, I think uh, Dean Williams is known for her leadership. And of course, at her level, uh, there are decisions she has to make you know, in, in the interest of the organization. But there are a couple of things I want to note as a human side of it. I want to thank you also for encouraging the team. They are 8,000, 10,000 miles away. You have always gone out of your way to support the team. Uh, I think that is much appreciated and it's very difficult when they are so far away. Second, on the Rose Fellowship, I'm so glad uh, uh, you mentioned the Rose Fellowship, which is allowing Indian uh, students from you, uh, Harvard Chan to come there. But I should also note that you actually uh, went out of your way to assign one of the fellowships for India, you know? so. Uh, you know, that's what has made it possible for Monica and before that Jennifer and others to come to India. So I do want to, uh, before I let you go, uh, Michelle, I want to make sure that people know that what you have done, uh, not just at the, at, the, at, the, at the organizational level, but also at the student level and your interest in it. So thank you so much for that. Um, I should add an hour before she leaves. How yes, please, go ahead. Our visit to Chennai, and it was remarkable. The amount of time we spent, I don't know the number of time, the amount of time, that, but the way to discuss the things, how we can make a difference, what you have done in your village, what you can do, repeating in other places. So it's a very clear concept of how we can change the lives of people, bring that health which can turn into happiness of the community. I, <laughs> I have great admiration, um, the, our dean, uh, Mrs. Thank Williams, it's, it's been so nice to have met you. Now seeing you now, you look the same, but uh, <laughs> I think we gained a lot in between. Uh, Thank you. India and Apollo uh, and the, my, the, the villages are, which we are looking after have gained immensely. Thank you. Thank you. It's been really wonderful that we, we had the opportunity to meet you and you brought this program to India and to, to my village start, start with who would exchange a lot of it. Thank you. Thank now, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Reddy. I, I hope Sorry, that was just the first visit. Uh, yeah. uh, that's wonderful. We'll, 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 we'll make sure that Dean Williams uh, repeats her visits to India. You know? So uh, next, uh, I want to, uh, to give, uh, you know, I know we have uh, only 40 minutes or so, uh, but it is very important to hear from Dr. Reddy and his response. He already began, before we went live with the program, he began talking about it, even though we are short of time, I do want to hear from his remarks. Uh, I feel a little ridiculous to introduce Dr. Reddy, uh, uh, who is a legend, uh, not only in India, but globally, uh, but we do have global audience, Dr. Reddy, so I just want to say a couple of words about you, even though I feel a little uh, awkward in introducing you to somebody. Uh, Dr. Reddy is uh, technically the chair of Apollo Hospitals, he's the founder, uh, is a uh, is a doctor by training, uh, but a healer by temperament. Uh, but uh, all these things you can find uh, on any website. You 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 are are even going going to the Apollo website. So that's all very well known. And so and that part is not uh, uh, you know uh, new. But what what is not? Uh, I think what is more important to know uh, about Dr. Reddy is his passion and commitment. Uh, who, you know, he took huge risks and chances uh, when he went to India and began this enterprise and, and never lost this human side of this. Uh, of, 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 that's why I, kept, I keep using the word healing, uh, not just, you know, uh, trying to take care and treat uh, patients. Uh, and, 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 and I think uh, no wonder he has received many honor effects uh, from the government of India and all over the world but I think the best known, uh, I think the most rewarding and gratifying one would be uh, his employees, uh, people, admirers like us and the villagers uh, who are benefiting uh, from his beneficence. You know? So uh, Dr. Reddy, uh, we are so honored and thrilled. Uh, uh, it's great to meet you actually virtually. I heard so much about you. Uh, so if you can just give a brief remarks and response to Dr. Williams, uh, and then we can go on to the, re with the rest of the program. Thank you, Dr. I must say hello to Professor Richard. I'm very happy first for Harvard Chan to have taken up, to 
total health project. Uh, where, where it's really touched because well, what we began was when uh, Apollo has been doing some a number of charitable programs. More often it was correcting the poor children with heart problems, then in cancer and several other um, so charitable pro programs we were doing. But then we saw in our village, uh, for 10 years they were in drought. So that made uh, people who are, you know, were living reasonably good, well, uh, completely shattered. Number one, because of uh, non aware, not aware to buy things. And second, most important is their health conditions started deteriorating. The worst was because there was no rain for 10 years, there was drought and even drinking water was a difficulty. So this is the first thing that we took. It was my granddaughter. For her wedding anniversary, she presented the first bore well with uh, sand filtration. Now we have 14 of those, but that's why we started first. Then when we went there and see, seeing them, that they're happy that they would get drinking water, our teams studied other things. Because I had a, uh, this is where we said, we requested the government whether we could take care of the total health of the, that mandal. That mandal has approximately 70,000 plus people. So finally it took them some time to say, that, how can we give you the total wonder? You can do one or two programs. So I said, no, we'll be happy to take care of the entire healthcare so that it may really make an impact along with the other uh, parameters. So finally they agreed. So we took it over about four and a half years from now. And uh, first we began completely trying to see what are the parameters, the health parameters of the entire population. So we, we did a total uh, study, what we call the health checks. Health checks, you know, Apollo health check is well known, we've done 22 million checkups. So we had those advantage. So the computer could pick up and do individualized checkup for all the entire population. We couldn't do for the 60,000 plus, plus 45,000 plus, now we've done another 3,000. So this gave us an idea of what their problems are. Most important were the diabetes. You know, we had 14,000 odd diabetes, but we also found that known diabetes, unknown diabetes were another five, 6,000. Similarly on hypertension, so, uh, and then obesity. Uh, you will wonder in a village where there is starvation, how their obesity was. But we had a small number of obesity, obese people too. But more importantly, we had people with malnutrition. Which was, the, which was what we were really more concerned. But gauging all these parameters, uh, we, end, we, we started the entire program, first of course, by giving them water, drinking water for the entire <coughs> the surrounding villages with these 14 bore wells. But then we took on the program of nutrition. So how do you give them uh, reasonable, good food uh, to sustain? Uh, we coupled that program with uh, uh, maternity and child welfare. You know, unfortunately, in the India, even today, our uh, neonatal and maternal mortality rates are, are high. And our district was one of those worst districts with over 47 or 45 uh, neonatal and close to 80 maternal mortalities. So we thought we should address that problem and we look after nutrition, especially for these people. So we, when a lady, the moment she gets pregnant, our team takes over. First, we already have the total data. So the new, proper nutrition is given to her, the vitamins, whatever is required. Then two meals, five meals are given to give her good nutrition during the course of these nine months. And then when it comes to uh, delivery, delivery is done under our supervision, either in the hospital or by our team. So. The result is in the last two and a half years, I'm happy to say that there's no neonatal or maternal mortality, which I think makes us feel very, very happy. And even the government has several times commented on, on this, how we could achieve it. There's no magic, but I think systematically they have followed what is need to be done for the mother. And then at the time of birth, what precautions need to be taken during the course of delivery. One lady had a problem, Nothing to do with maternity. Three months later, she died. Uh, some neurological problem. Somehow they could not. Uh, uh, apart from that, I think that's, that's, uh, that's the first thing that we took. 
take them over the nutrition of the entire uh, thing. Uh, second, more, more important, the water problem we addressed to them, but they were the people who had some water, they were growing crops which absorbed a lot of water, you know, like rice cultivation. So we took the uh, help of the agricultural uh, directors. They came down and advised them what crops they can have with the little water that is available. So that could help them first for living and second, proper utilization of water. So this uh, the third important thing that we've done. Now, as I said, they're all very, very happy. They're, if, if I can have a picture of them, they're all jumping with joy because they had some rain which they had never seen in their lifetime, some of them. People who are below 30 have never seen that type of rain. They are absolutely very, very, very happy. I'm getting every day half a dozen phone calls. So it's pouring, it's pouring. You know, they're so happy. So I hope by God's grace, this will sustain. So their normal livelihood will come back. So whenever the normal livelihood, our, our involvement in keeping them, a basic thing it should come and say, I should see that they should be healthy and happy. So I think, you know, achieving our goal, we'll be able to do more because it's one problem so that they can get better cultivation and all that. As far as the environment is concerned, I think, it, you know, we, we have done several things. The organization said, uh, the people, to advise them what they could do in uh, keeping the environment. For, for, we have no control on rains, but in, but, or in other things. But in individuals, I think we tried a lot to see that smoking, drinking, these uh, type of habits were well controlled. Then I think to, to mental relaxation for youngsters who built the uh, tracks for running, things like that. For early generation, a few games like caroms and bridge, and then they could have a little entertainment, a little entertainment hall. They will come in the evening and spend some time. So I think they slowly they started adopting more and more. Then we brought in uh, yoga and meditation. So I think this has made tremendous impact on a lot of people. I am very happy to say the younger generation have, uh, have adopted tremendously to this. So this has made a significant impact. So for the uh, as far as the schools are concerned. Uh, we did a very, we, we did a few programs in getting them their school dresses and getting their whatever school needs are concerned, even toilets and all they didn't have, we fixed all those. Uh, and then um, the most important thing that uh, it, the, the Richard Beck is the Detol company. They came down saying that three years Dr. Reddy will help prevent, uh, bring hand cleanliness and sanitation and hygiene. So we'll have this program for you for, uh, uh, oh, so, I, so I, we agree. I'm happy to tell you that uh, it has made a tremendous impact on the 17,000 children which they did. And then the effect is on the parents. The result is shown when we had this huge pandemic the neighboring uh, mandal had a number of cases of COVID, whereas in the whole mandal, we had only 102. And all 102, all, in 102, 90 were treated at home with our doctors going around. So I'm happy to say that we have brought in, you know, a, a change in their mental attitude and walked, they are now able to walk towards saying healthy and happy happiness in their lives, uh, which I'm very grateful for, for your uh, team's suggestions in many ways. And we'd like to work with you. But there are many others who are now asking us, saying, can we repeat this model? What you've done for 60, I would honestly think if you can do what we've done for 60,000 people, if you do it for 6 billion people, uh, you and I should feel very happy. This is where I think I look forward to your team helping us to take it to first other parts of India. And I'm happy that during the next visit, they will see, because of the rains, they will see the happiness. And in many ways, I'm thankful to the entire team who worked. It was only my heart. The people on ground made this huge impact. For them, I owe a lot. I also, what, again, I want to repeat, Dr. Williams, the way she spoke to me, 
a couple of hours that we spent together was really motivating that we can we can do and we should do more and we hope we'll do very many things to make people healthy and happy thank you dr sir thank, thank, thank you dr reddy uh, what is actually really motivating is your vision and execution of that vision so extremely grateful to you for the work you have done uh, you know, for not only for the healthcare but also uh for people of chitur in aragonda uh, and you know so thank you it's a great inspiration to us one, one. just i had one so, more thing i forgot say one of our doctors felt that he should do the knee transplants so you wouldn't believe they have done so far every alternate week they go there it, you know we have the they made uh, the theaters absolutely safe they have done 300 uh, knee transplants for this old age Uh, people, we were so happy when I go there. One of the ladies told me, "My child, the grandchildren used to tease me. Now I can chase them and hit them." <laughs> That right. is three hundred without a single infection, but doing in a village three hundred knee transplants is, is wonderful. So that's a marker now for the oncologists to go. That's uh -huh. how that program, screening program, has started. Our hypertension, he's a WHO expert. He contributed a lot in controlling hypertension. But all of these are, are there. I think we'll build on those blocks. Thank you. Absolutely, well, wonderful. It's always nice to hear these stories. You know, they are good exemplars, as we say. Uh, we can, as I said, we would love to engage you further on this. But as with the program, uh, I next want to introduce uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Richard Segrist. Uh, Rick is a colleague and a friend and a partner in crime. Since I, uh, he, he uh, not only. Uh, you know serves as a senior lecturer in the school but he also actually heads our doctor of public health program uh in uh, and so he enlists me to help him and work with him on that program too uh rick uh, as um, many of you may not know that actually rick is a, an entrepreneur you know has found number of number of companies before he came to harvard uh, uh so he has this wonderful background in in both uh, in a corporate sector as well as academic sector so that's why you know he brings this very rich uh, bent of mind you uh, know uh, to address some of these issues and when we thought of uh, you know this wonderful uh, case uh, you know of, of this great example of you know, rick obviously uh, was the one who came to mind so rick we are really grateful to you for doing this uh, please go ahead and uh, tell us uh, why did you do this you know what did you do this so, Sure, sure. Thank you very much, Vish. And I, I do want to start by thanking uh, Chairman Reddy and Sunita and Sagita Reddy for their commitment to writing this case, and especially for their commitment to public health in rural India and beyond. As Dean Williams said, total health is an inspiring story that I'm looking forward to sharing with our Harvard Chan students. I'd like to walk you through a little bit through uh, the writing of the case. and the launch of the case a uh, very honored to be involved in that today so if we could move to the next slide my in country involvement started with this meeting that you see here this was the case kickoff meeting in uh, chennai at apollo headquarters with dr reddy dr subana dr singh along with ananya uh who was actually a student of mine at the harvard chan school so it's great to be able to work with her in the in the research center and the insights that were shared in that meeting were just invaluable for me in writing the case and to give me a really good understanding of total health so if we can move to the next slide this is an aerial photo of the total health complex in aragonda i had the opportunity to do a tour there to spend a night there to have a delicious locally prepared dinner really got a feel for what total health was all about at the headquarters there and if we can move on to the next slide when you walk into the um total health complex this is what you see and this really expresses the essence of total health total health equals total well-being and you can see shown in this poster is the eight key areas of total health initiatives and those go well beyond just healthcare to address the social determinants of health so health nutrition water and sanitation environment livelihoods education lifestyle modification and community based infra infrastructure support 
and Dr. Reddy uh, gave you some insights into many of the initiatives in those different areas. But it's scaling up India's first integrated holistic health delivery model, total health. So if we go on to the next slide. As part of my time in Araganda, I had a chance to go out in the community and visit various activities. Here's one in terms of community ed education, hand washing. And this is with a group of children learning the importance of proper hand washing. And just seeing how excited the children were, how well the training was conducted, was very meaningful to me as I incorporated that into the case. We can move on to the next slide. You can see how important yoga is in terms of an initiative, lifestyle modification is part of Total Health. This is one of uh, multiple yoga sessions that I saw during my visit. It's really clear the enjoyment of the exercise, but also of the social interaction of the participating mothers in this yoga session. And if we could move on, this women empowerment meeting was really important uh, from what I, my interaction. It was an inspiring meeting. It was attended by local women entrepreneurs discussing their initiatives. Uh, as Vish mentioned, I'm an entrepreneur myself, so I greatly appreciated the passion and the dedication of these women as they described the innovation that they are being involved in in the local community. And then Monica Nirmala, who will be talking in a minute, uh, as you know, spent time preparing for me to go to India, doing a lot of research there that was extremely helpful to me as I was involved in the case. And I'm really proud of uh, that work that she's documented here in this poster that she presented to over uh, 100 Harvard Chan students and faculty that they saw during our poster presentation. So as I mentioned, you'll hear from Monica shortly, but I want to express my appreciation for the groundwork she did that made the case study much easier. So what is a case study? Uh, some of you have sat through a class discussion using the case method. Others of you may have not. I will be teaching the total health case and we're calling it total health vision in reality in rural India. So I'll be teaching this case coming up on December 9th to over 50 Harvard Chan students in my innovation and entrepreneurship class. And here are some of the really rich questions that we'll be discussing using the case method. And I expect this will be the first of many such case discussions with our students. So what are the issues? What should Total Health do to evaluate and improve the impact on the community? How can Total Health be sustainable? for the indefinite future, really important consideration. How to replicate total health in other rural areas of India, and this is already underway in terms of discussions and plans. How should public and private partnerships play a role in the future of total health? And then finally, how and when should Dr. Reddy transfer responsibility to total health to others? As you can imagine, these are really going to uh, generate some really good discussion from our students. And then the case sort of ends with other challenges that are facing total health. And these are not unusual challenges for innovative organizations. First, how do you mobilize the community so that the community feels ownership in the health seeking behavior and the lifestyle modifications, making sure that they're trained medical personnel in a rural setting in building capacity through things such as task shifting, creating further linkages between public and private sectors, looking beyond just individual illnesses to screen for health and very importantly, well-being, bringing more talent to bear on collecting, analyzing, and sharing data. We all know how important data can be and have that be an evidence-based model for population health improvement in rural India and beyond. And then finally, finding the right combination of professionalism and local community engagement as we move to the future in terms of total health. I'm gonna end my remarks with some quotes from the case that I think express the essence of the case and the essence of total health. Starting with Dr. Reddy's quote, 
Total health connotes the total well-being of an individual, inclusive of the physical, mental, social, ecological, and spiritual health. More importantly, it transcends the barriers and caters to the healthcare requirements and aspirations of the community through their journey from womb to tomb. And then for Managing Director Sunita Reddy, it has always been an exciting journey, never a dull moment. When we finish one important task, we're motivated to move on to another. We understand the social impact and we find it fulfilling. And then Managing Director Sangeeta Reddy, our father has been an inspirational leader and innovator. His approach is to go ahead and do whatever it takes to help people take risks and learn from the results. And Dr. Reddy, we are so appreciative of you being that inspirational leader and innovator and congratulate you on what Total Health has been and what it will become. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Richard. This is absolutely brilliant, the way we have put this together. I think it gives us now more strength to say that we can do more. Hopefully, the question is saying, please come back, Richard, and see what more we can do. Because we are an entrepreneur, we are a successful entrepreneur. So I think that that would also help us. This is what we're trying to bring back to the village, some amount of entrepreneurship so that they're you know, well-being should significantly improve. Thank you. I'm very, very touched with, with your presentation. You put it so nicely. Uh, and as I said, I'm thankful. My role in, in that is, you know, they have more, they, most of the work were all done by them. Subhana there, and uh, um, uh, Mandeep advising him, and my daughters, and especially one of my granddaughter, Upasana. We'll see more of her. She has a number of these programs which we're doing in the forest. Uh, she has five, six uh, for it, so that she has given a general permit for all these uh, inspectors in the forest to get free health care. Right. She'll come and visit you one day. Thank you, Richard. Very, very pleased. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Reddy. I think you're being very modest here. You're giving credit to everybody else except yourself. So we really appreciate it. I'm, sh I'm sharing most of it, my happiness. Uh, absolutely. So happy. And, and, I, and I love the phrase that you're using, well-being, not just health. And that's wonderful, I think. Uh, Rick, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Uh, Rick, you know, I, looking at the photographs and reading the case study, brought back a lot of uh, nostalgic memories for me from my childhood visiting those villages in a neighboring district, not in Chittu myself. So it, it's wonderful. Uh, and, and I think uh, your, your slides couldn't do justice to the rich case study. There's a wonderful material. So hopefully people will have an opportunity. I also thought, I wish I was a class, you know, when, when you are teaching this case study, you know, it would have been so nice. Uh, so, uh, uh, next, I think, you know, I, I do want to hear uh, from others, uh, uh, from my uh, friend uh, and colleague, uh, Sunita Reddy. Uh, Sunita has been such a wonderful supporter uh, at a friend. I think, you know, she was uh, one of the people who brought uh, Dean Williams back to India the second time around. Uh, and, and that actually led, including a, six or seven other faculty members from Harvard Chan, uh, we have uh, excellent uh, memories and connections from that visit. And Sunita, you have been such a steadfast supporter of the center. Uh, both, uh, you know, we value your advice and please uh, say a few words in response to Rick's presentation. Yes, yes uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vishwanathan and Professor Segrist, uh, Chairman and everyone who is listening to this case study. Let me bring this connection between my Self as an alumni of Harvard Business School and what we're doing here in, in the public health school. So I believe, and this has been Chairman's vision, that we should have, we should do business with a purpose. And, and our purpose was really to bring up the quality of healthcare in India. And that's why he came back to India. If you look at what is happening now, and I bring in an economic perspective here. India has 20% of the world's population and only 3.27% of the GDP. In the past one year, the COVID crisis has really amplified the chasm between those who have healthcare and those who have not. You know, a healthcare crisis has also become an economic crisis. 
I think is this at these times, we value the work that you've done even more. So what we've done in Aragonda is really, you know, all of you have spoken so much about it. I, I should not speak too much except to say that it was a concept of total well-being. It was about creating good health for all, but health you know, understanding that health and education are deeply intertwined. So those with a good education can have the ability to understand themselves more, to look at the aspect of prevention that keeps them in good health. And moving on, the fact that we're looking at well-being, which also means the ability to earn a living and therefore look after families. So in a sense, you know, it is complete holistic well-being. It's about education, health, and the ability to stand on one's own feet. And I believe that this has been a very important part of it. Our hope is that this concept that we've created will become something that can move on, is something that we can scale. And I'm so grateful to Harvard uh, the School of Public Health for making it a case study, because we hope that companies around India and around the world use this model to actually improve the health indicators of their countries and especially ours where you know where we really do need to do a lot of work where we need to move beyond the urban cities into the rural areas i'd also like to mention that you know in many of our countries and dr vishwanath will know this well that we have our own ancient uh, systems of healing in india we have ayurveda and Total Health has drawn deeply on the resources that are available in India for well-being and for better health. And this is something that, of course, can be replicated in systems around the world. So today, I'd like to say a big thank you, because what you've done is really, you, you will take it from becoming a case study into a very vibrant model that is all about well-being and better public health. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Sunita Garu. That, that's very uh, kind of you and a very good apt description, I think, especially on, on the topic of well-being. Uh, next, I want to introduce uh, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, who is a Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals, uh, who's also very closely involved uh, on both sides, both on the, on, on the Aragonda side as well as the, uh, the hospital management. So, Ms. Sangeeta Reddy, welcome. Thank you and namaste. Please go ahead. So. so first of all, let me also add my thanks. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. And I think it is very important to take a small village like Aragonda and put it in the minds and hearts uh, and on the curriculum of an international uh, institute like uh, Harvard. And I thank you all very much for doing so, because I believe that when we showcase uh, these tiny dots of excellence, where people have tried to take something different and find a new approach, uh, which is imminently scalable and relatable to the local population. Uh, this is truly uh, a way to bring true health to the population. Because if we try to retrofit a globally acceptable, very advanced model, the time to acceptance and the cost to implementation may be much higher. Here, this is a beautiful blend of some of the best scientifically approved methodologies, but also extremely localized and implementable. I think um, the day in the year 2000, when the then uh, health minister, Mr. Pramod Mahajan, landed in Aragonda village in a helicopter. It was the first helicopter that had ever come to that village. And I visually remember that site because children from all around came running into the school to see a helicopter land. And when he launched the hospital at that time, this was pre-total health, the hospital came first. But even then, it was conceived as a hospital with health insurance, a passport to health, so everyone had access. Uh, it had telemedicine, even in those days, we were the first telemedicine program and the telemedicine was actually formally launched by President Bill Clinton and it had the outreach and the concept of preventive care. So this rural, replicable, scalable model, which was intended to be self-sufficient, uh, was one of, was really where the birth of total health happened. And then we went on to appreciate the importance of primary health care, the importance of 
uh, taking care of the social determinants of health, clean drinking water, nutrition. We were very moved by the fact that the Indian, the infant mortality rate in India uh, was so significant. And we knew that with good monitoring, good nutrition and institutional delivery, as well as a little bit of you know, the, the, immune, the vaccine, the medication, we could change that statistic. And now this Argonda cohort with 11 nutrition centers is uh, a national model for the lowest maternal and infant mortality. So I think the, the power of impact, the ability to monitor and scale, uh, the need to take this and share this model with the world all make me very happy to be sitting on this platform today. Uh, I'm genuinely thankful. Uh, I look forward to all of you coming back sometime in the future and this being an ongoing relationship because I think when Monica came, she also showed us many things that we hadn't done completely. And it further energized us. I, I have interacted only with her and didn't have the opportunity, Professor Richard, to, to meet with you or with Ananya. And since that day, we now have over 57,000 records are completely digitalized. Uh, we're now bringing them into the local language and bringing the concept of a personal health record, which will be mobile enabled. Uh, the yoga training has intensified and people from here are going to neighboring villages to teach yoga. We're also looking at creating a research program on the impact of yoga and reducing uh, lower back pain in women. So uh, the, the kitchen gardens are becoming a model which can be shared by everyone. And I'm very happy to say that the COVID response of this community, communities that work together, can also fight together against difficult things. So uh, the, the numbers of COVID in this entire cohort of over close to 70,000 people, we've had under 500 people who became COVID positive. The education was very, very uh, distinct and effective. And I'm extremely happy to say that the, the mortality rate was under 0.3%, despite a large number of the, the people who got sick being geriatric. So ultimately, you know, it's, it's in the results, it's in the happiness of people. And uh, we, are, we are inspired to continue this initiative and extremely uh, grateful to Harvard for spending the time with us and look forward to an ongoing relationship. Again, from all of us, our gratefulness great appreciation that uh, are taking and recording this. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think I, I particularly like the ending uh, that it's going to be an ongoing relationship. This is not the end of the conversation. It's the beginning of a conversation, I think. Uh, next, you know, we, uh, one of the things uh, we uh, made a point of when we started the India Research Center is that it should be a platform for students. You know, really it's the next generation uh, that will move us forward, that will take us forward. So how do we really build uh, that capacity and interest and motivation and uh, uh, among students was, was a constant concern for us. And thanks to the Deborah Rose Fellowship uh, that has been made possible. Uh, and one of those fellows is with us, uh, Monica Nirmala, uh, who, uh, you know, it, it was amazing watching Monica visit India uh, and take to India so so well, you know. So uh, she enjoyed her time. I interacted with her when she was in Mumbai on her way. Uh, I think uh, you're coming back from Aragonda at the time. I think so. Monica, you just want to share a couple of minutes of your experiences there. So. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Vish. Um, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is a a uh, great honor uh, and a pleasure. I'm humbled to be back to the US and India, though virtually uh, with all of you. And I thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, in, in 2019, I did my uh, summer internship in India for six weeks. Uh, big thanks to Harvard Chan School of Public Health through the Rose Service Learning Fellowship that had uh, enabled me to work at the India Research Center. Also big thanks to Professor Vish Professor uh, Rick Sigris, Dr. Awasti, and Harvard IRC team. I spent about three weeks in Tavanam Pale Mandal and three weeks in a few big cities in uh, Mumbai, Chennai, and Delhi. I love India. Um, I was there uh, gathering uh, background information for this case study uh, on total health that we launched today. Um, I found my 
summer internship experience to be one of the most uh, memorable experience in my professional life. Firstly, I was intrigued by Total Health program because of its similarities to my previous work experience in a nonprofit in West Borneo, Indonesia, where I'm from. Total Health has uh, various community-based programs that touch multiple determinants of health at every stage of human life. And your program include healthcare, nutritious meal, providing nutritious meals, building water plants, teaching yoga, which is my favorite, uh, planting trees, training women, and etc. And I would also like to thank and deeply appreciate uh, Dr. Reddy, Dr. Sangita Reddy, and Ms. Sunita Reddy, and all the Reddy family, as well as your wonderful team on the ground, Dr. Subana, Dr. Mandip Singh, Dr. Raj Kopal, Mr. Danjai, and everyone that I cannot name one by one for your hard work and especially for your responsiveness to people's needs and requests, as well as for your public health perspectives in addressing social determinants of health in order to improve the health and well-being of 60,000 people there. During my time in India, I conducted around 42 interviews and 11, 11 uh, focus group discussions, starting from patients, beneficiaries, staff members, the government, up to the executive management team, and Dr. Reddy himself as the chair of Apollo. And I learned a lot from each of you, so thank you very much for that. Uh, during my time in the villages, I realized that one of the most pressing issues in this area was prolonged drought, as mentioned uh, by Dr. Reddy before. The area was so dry when I was there, and people told me that they needed to dig wells over a thousand feet below the ground to get water. And even so, and even so some still did not find the water. And people were quite desperate of water because rain did not come for years when I was there. And Total Health had worked on this water issue since the beginning. Uh, they dug wells, built uh, 12, 14 water plants to provide clean water to the people. However, uh, I realized that there is only so much one can do. It's not always easy to find water sources in the area. And Dr. Subbanna, uh, the managing director of Total Health once told me that we can provide water plants, but not water. So I was reflecting a lot on this prolonged drought issue. And I realized that this is only a system of a much bigger global problem that we face, which is climate change that causes not only drought in many places in the world, including my own country, but also flood, extreme weather events, heat waves, crop failure, and the list can go on and on. And I know that um, climate change is too big of a problem for this community or any community or total health or even the government to solve the problem on their own. I realized that this is a global problem that uh, we need to tackle together, all of us uh, around the world. So this experience in India has inspired me and further convinced me in my career path as well, which is working on uh, planetary health. I believe that human cannot be healthy without a healthy environment and a healthy planet as well. And we all need to work together to realize a healthier future for us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Adopt you to our program. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope uh, you are one of uh, first of the many students who will be visiting uh, and working with the program. Uh, we, we are running out of time, but uh, we do, uh, we were planning to have a, a longer panel uh, discussion. Uh, but I thought, you know, um, at least I will ask one question of each panelist. Uh, we have a small panel of, uh, with uh, Ms. Sunita Reddy, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, and Rick. Rick Seagrest. Uh, so, um, in, the, in, the, in the because of the paucity of time, maybe if I can, if I'm allowed to ask, I'll ask you at least one question so that, uh, uh, that I have so many questions because of, of the remarks you made. Maybe I should start with uh, you, Ms. Sunita Reddy, you know, so uh, if it's okay with you. Uh, you. You said something which is very interesting to me, not today, uh, uh, but, uh, but before. And, and, and also today you said you brought an economist uh, mindset uh, to the issue here. And, and, and there was something uh, Total Health Program has done which is interesting, right? Uh, you, you said Total Health Program approach is to make people pay at least a little something 
and not provide a completely free service. That is very interviewing, right you now, uh, because most people provide free service, but there are some, uh, I mean, I know the uh, reason for it, but I'm just curious, you know, how did you come to that conclusion and what did you think of it you know, in, in terms of uh, its success and effectiveness? I think it's important to recognize that uh, when people get something free, they take it for granted. For example, air, water, you know, whatever you give them free, they take it for granted. When they, when they contribute, they also recognize that they have a responsibility, you know, to, to reach that perfect state of health. And then we become partners in, we become partners in delivering on that vision of perfect health. So unless we get their participation in a way that's meaningful for both of us, I don't think that, you know, we would have achieved this objective. And in this manner, we could actually cover far more than just a village. So, because it, it, it actually doubles the resources that we have with us in terms of capital. Thank you. You know, uh, even in, in, in you know, social and behavioral sciences literature, you know, we found in our own research, I think having a little bit of a stake in the system, you know, what we call skin in the game is very important. Uh, for people and not to just offer free services. So that was very... And of course, uh, I must add that it was an insurance program, uh -huh. which again right. was reinsured. So uh -huh. this whole aspect of universal coverage is something that we started at that time. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, but hopefully that could be scaled up. You know? uh, so my, uh, thank you for that. So my next question, uh, I think, is, uh, is to Ms. Sangeeta Reddy, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy. So, you said uh, you use the phrase social determinants of health. Uh, so the World Health Organization defines health as a complete state of well-being, right? Physical, social, and mental, not just the absence of disease. Uh, and, and, and that's what intrigues me again about total health program. It's total health. It's not siloed communicable diseases or diabetes or heart disease, but you really took a very broad approach so tell us how, how you came about uh, with that idea of a breadth and integrated approach and, and how can we scale it up moving forward? Yes. Yeah. So I think I don't really take credit for, for that. I think um, this thought of thinking integrated probably started way back, uh, you know, in Apollo in 1983 when... Um, um, uh, Dr. Eddie, our chairman, my father was thinking of a cardiac hospital and he finally said that the body is an interrelated system and became a multidisciplinary hospital. I think taking out pieces and solving is one way, but thinking integrated, which is reflective of the human body and the actual the ecosystem that we live, the more and more we think of an interconnected world, an interconnected universe, I think the more sensitive we will be to, to everything. Uh, but but actually, I think one led to another. So we started with the acute problem, which was advanced healthcare, and the ability to pay for it, which was the insurance. We then went into primary healthcare. We then added on community involvement, so the community center. We added research. Uh, we added the aspect of the community gardens. Then we said women's livelihood. So if we started livelihood generation. So it was a sequential progression, which I think is, is the way we will continue, that this work is never done. You have to keep help working to make communities better and keep working to expand the reach and the capacity that you have. So, so that's what Total Health is about. But if we can encapsulate this in a model, share this with others so that this becomes a baseline document for others to use uh, to then build upon and india has six over six hundred thousand villages and if each of these had access and over 60 percent of our population lives in villages rather than creating urban migration we must continue to focus on enhancing rural india so it, it serves multiple purposes and uh, i think it's it's one day at a time one person at a time, but always with a vision and a design to help people. Very well said. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to ask a last question uh, to Professor Segrist. You know, uh, why did you do this case study? You know, what do you hope students will learn from this? And we want to know that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, in my innovation, I 
part of it is entrepreneurship, part of it is entrepreneurship, which means in existing organizations being innovative and in challenging the status quo. And many large successful organizations don't do that. Uh, they may give donations, which are great, but to be able to work on establishing something totally new like Total Health and have it working with the community is really a perfect example of why this case I think is going to be impactful. So that our students will be able to see how you can do something outside the four walls of what you traditionally do within your organizations. Thank you, Rick. Uh, wonderful. Uh, I do hope uh, our students will continue to benefit and then from your classes are inspired to visit Aragonda and, and engage uh, further uh, the program. Uh, we, are, we are a few minutes past the one hour we allocated actually, so I'm very, very, very grateful for people to staying on. Uh, let me just say this has been such a wonderful uh, 60 minute or 66 minute session. Uh, we, could, we could spend the next two hours talking about this issue, this very important issue. But as I said, as I keep saying, there are no goodbyes in my life, at least. These are all starting points for a conversation and we'll continue to do this conversation. So uh, first, uh, let me first thank uh, Chairman Reddy. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, as I repeatedly, you continue to inspire us uh, with your agility and vision and innovation. So I hope you continue to do that for us. And I also want to thank uh, you know, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, Ms. Sunita Reddy is a good friend, you know, uh, for participating and, and your support, not just for the case study, uh, but we are advised with the India Research Center. I think you know, we, we are very grateful for that. And to, to the team at the Apollo Hospitals and the Total Health Program who worked, who were so uh, hospitable uh, to both Professor Segrest and, and, and uh, Ms. Nirmala, uh, that means a lot. Uh, I also want to thank uh, my team at the Harvard Chan India Research Center who are all working behind the scenes, uh, who are just so amazing. You know, they're all scattered all over India right now. Uh, but we are working so hard, you know, to keep the programs going. Thank you so much. Uh, also thank, uh, you know, the Paramal family, you know, Dr. Spati Paramal and Ajay Paramal, who uh, helped us found the center, actually, you know. So for their vision, which is allowing us to uh, do a number of programs, uh, and, and of course to the technical team. So let me end uh, by saying that, um, Repeating, uh, you know, what the World Health Organization's definition of health is. Health is just not an absence of disease. You know, it is a complete state of well-being, uh, whether it's physical or uh, psychological and mental and, and social well-being. And, and I think, you know, the, that approach of, of positive health is what Total Health Program exemplifies, you know. Uh, that's why I'm so excited about the program and, and why it should be scaled up and why the lessons from it should be disseminated widely. So I'm thankful that uh, Rick, you're doing this. Thank you everyone uh, for joining us and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to get back together in next year uh, to reflect on these things. Thank you again. Well, thank you all. Stay safe.